Hi folks and welcome to this video. It's going to be a short one. I'm going to highlight or show off, I guess, showcase, that's the word, isn't it? Showcase. Air manager panels that uh, I've built for the Zebo 737. Um, in fact, I'm actually not running the Zebo at the moment. I'm running the uh, ultimate, uh, what do they call it? The, the ultimate 737 Zebo mashup. So it's got um, the external external model um, from Ultimate, I guess they are. And I'm not explaining it very well, am I? But I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. And inside, it has all the systems of the Zebo. It was released just before Christmas. I think there's an update come out. Um, I haven't actually got that yet. But anyway, here we go. So it's uh, it's it's a wonderful piece of kit it's uh, freeware as a lot of people have put a lot of time and effort into making these models over many years and I thought I'd do some panels for cockpit builders using the air manager software from sim innovations BV these are freeware panels um, they're free because well, the, the aircraft is free, and I think um, given all the hard work that those folks have put into it, it would be a bit, uh, well, it wouldn't quite be right, really, to, to, to try and charge money for anything working off the back of those. Let's show you a little bit of, of what we've done. And um, these, like I say, these are, these are freeware. They are available from here. This is my, my forum site. Just head there and you'll see some details on development, how they were put together, how to download them, updates. They're constantly being updated, so there's uh, there's there's a there's still a lot going on. Righty ho, let's start then with the the captain's panel, and I will zip that across here. I'm actually running Air Manager and Xplane on the same computer. Of course, the beauty of Air Manager is that it can be run across a network of computers or it can be run on the one computer with multiple screens, just depending on, on what your, uh, your own cockpit setup is. And for the purposes of making this video, I am keeping it nice and simple and running it all on the same PC. But the good news there is that you can see that it works perfectly well. The, frame rates are pretty good it's um, it, it, it's uh, it's grand so this is the captain's panel it's using the air manager stream facility to extract the uh, the the primary flight display and the nav display and also the clock um, I have a kind of scroll facility in here where the panels are taller than the screens these are my own custom panels they're built for my screen resolutions which is 2560 by 1440 I actually came up with a, a, a new way of coding that within the air manager scripting um, file system and it works really well and um, I have to say it, it's actually quite I think going to be quite easy for, for folk to modify these to fit your own so enough enough um, enough BS from me we can either um, drag the screen or there's a facility there which if you have a knobster you could use the knobster then just to literally just dial the screen up and down or I find the best solution is just to have some touch points mouse points or if you were using a touch screen push the panels to wherever you 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 want them to to go this is the captain's side there are night lighting effects. I'll show you some of those in a minute. Uh, we, we've got the lights test there, so you can see all the enunciators light up. The clock goes into uh, a test mode. Um, everything, everything works. We'll close that panel down. We will open up the center MIP, uh, center main instrument panel. There we go. The old style standby instruments. I think I've just got one VOR selected there on the nav at the moment. We've got the auto brake. That all works. Every, everything everything works. And let's get the gear into the off position. Close that one down. Let's say in, in your own cockpit, you'd have these open and positioned as you as, as you want 
based on, on where your screens are set. And the beauty of these is that each individual element, whether it's the, um, the, the standby instruments or the flat gauge or the landing gear or even the, the uh, display unit here, they're all separate gauges or instruments within a manager and you can position them, size them, do whatever you want with them to make your cockpit the way that you want it uh, to be made. I try and keep mine so that it mirrors the, the real aeroplane as much as possible, but you could build multiple different panels, say to, to uh, combine elements of the overhead and the, and the MIP here for different phases of flight. Let's say you wanted a panel that covered you while you were uh, starting engines, that kind of thing. You can, you can, you can do, do whatever you like. So this is the, now with the, the, the more modern um, standby in instruments here with the integrated, integrated unit. Let's close that down. Right, we are, we're in the cruise. I'm not one of these guys that can fly the aircraft in X-plane, talk, look at chat and do 15 other things at once at the same time and make it all look really good and uh, uh, and professional. So I just got the aircraft up into the air. Let's open up now the, this is the glare shield. Um, so we have the mode control panel. This is a modern version. There's three different versions of this available. Everything works uh, here on Air Manager. So I can change the change the uh, the map display. Where's that? Uh, that's uh, Saint Lucia there. So let's um, let's uh, go direct to the Saint Lucia VOR. Huonora VOR. Bring the range down a touch. There we go. And let's climb the airplane up to. Um, Well, uh, let's go 210. Two, two and we're at 5,000 feet. We keep the speed at 240 and then we'll increase the speed as we, as we go. If I now make the time go forward, right, we're, now, we're now night and we've now got the panel in darkness. If I scroll down a touch and we've got the captain's light panels down the bottom here. Of course, these are all accessible. Um, if I turn up, just turn up the instrument light control, you can see there the, see there the backlighting changing. I am going to turn up the background light, which is the does the cap just so I can see a little bit better? I see a little bit better there. And then if we now do the AFDS floodlights, you can see there within Air Manager we've got the lighting lighting built in. And this will also react to the dome light as well. Right, so if I put the dome light to dim, you'll see there now we've got a, a the whole thing is dimly lit. Um, put it to off and go to bright, and we've got a much brighter light and with a, a kind of slight white overlay over the top of it, just to um, uh, just to give you the the, the 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 hint that you've got that artificial light from the the dome light there. So I'll close that down. We're we're still in the climb. Um, Let's see what else have we we've not looked at the um, the overhead yet. The overhead is fully modelled. Again, the lights are on because of the um, we've got the dome light, um, but we have night lighting with the gauge and the back lighting is all there. There are a thousand to go. I'm probably going to get a cabin altitude warning soon. No, I'm okay. I'm, I'm grand. Uh, everything works. Um, if I just move that across. And let's go outside. Come down to the come down to the front. Let's get the landing lights on. 
these are all being controlled through a manager um, the logo light the logo light on um, strobes strobes anti-call off wing lights off wing light on anti-calls on and the position lights There we go. Again, I've got the ability to move around the panel by just using um, touch points. It's much, much, much easier, I find, doing that than trying to physically scroll the panel up and down. You can, when you're when you're actually flying the thing, to just punch a um, in one spot a hidden button. Essentially, it much, 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 much easier. Uh, Say so ev everything on here. Everything on here works. All the um, the switch guards. All, um, all work. Uh, one of the things I've tried to do with this set of panels is get the graphics as as, as good as I can. Um, these, these again, these are freeware, but the the graphic um, quality is similar to the graphic quality of all my other panels. Right, I've shown you the overhead, I've shown you the glare shield, the captain's panel, the center MIP. The first officer's panel is here. Same as same as before. Everything is functional. Oh we can uh, yes, we can switch the um, we can switch the screens around as well. I didn't show you that on the captain's side. We've got the uh, the clock there, that all works. Um, hopefully, again, you can see that the, the the quality of the of the graphics here. Um, oh, CDU bay. Let's open that one up. So we've got the two CDUs and the lower display unit. I haven't got anything programmed in. I literally just took off and and, and went. Those of you that uh, may have followed this channel know that I'm, I'm much more into old-fashioned old aeroplanes, literally just get in and fly them. Um, but uh, I appreciate that this is a modern aeroplane and it has all the modern gadgets. They're all working. Everything is there. I could, I, I, I could put a route in and, um, and fly the aeroplane and operate the aeroplane using these, these air manager instruments. So we take that out, close that down, um, and the pedestal. That's the final part to show you. The one part that isn't modelled is the throttle quadrant. And the reason I haven't done that is because the vast majority of people that build their own cockpits or use this kind of software, they already have a throttle quadrant, a physical throttle quadrant unit of some description. And um, so at this stage, I I just haven't included one as part of the air manager, uh, as part of the air manager or the graphics and software. I, I just didn't think it was it was necessary. So once again, everything is is here. Um, all the all the tests on the fire. Not sure I should be doing this when I'm at uh, flight level. 210 but there we go if it works in the zebo it works in here there's a few dummy um dummy knobs that uh, that don't do anything at the moment um, what once those features are added into into the zebo i will add them in in here a flight deck entry video that that has a, a sort of graphics on the zebo so Right, um, I think I think that's it. I think that's all I need to show you. These are freeware. They are available here. So if you want to try them, you can try them. The aircraft is free. These panels are free. The only thing you'll you'll spend if you want to take a look at them and see what they're like, uh, the only thing you'll spend is is time. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy using them. Hopefully for any of you 
737 NG cockpit builders in X Plane using X Plane 12. Um, these will be of interest to you. Uh, once again, just you know, looking at the at the pedestal, uh, each each module, each sub panel is a separate instrument or gauge in X Plane. So you can position them, move them, um, resize them, do whatever you like to 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 match your own your own requirements. Right, I think that's it. I think I have um, I think I've uh, I, I've I've waffled on for for long enough. Uh, I hope you I hope you like them. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll be back shortly and I'll show you one of my other aircraft that's uh, that's next, which is which is being worked on which is the Felis Boeing 747-200, which has a completely different um, kind of cockpit. I'll just show you a, I'll show you a screenshot of, uh, of that. It's not gonna be really working because all the data refs are different, but um, there we go. That's an old fashioned styled uh, cockpit there with the, uh, the for the Felis 747-200. And I'll show you that in operation probably in my next in my next video thank you very much thanks for watching and um, take care